Martin and Susie from Gemini Connect here, and here we're here to talk about the latest flagship cameras from Fujifilm. Yeah, so you uh, switched over to Fujifilm from Nikon and made a whole video about why you did that. I used to shoot Nikon DSLRs before. I really was compelled to get a mirrorless camera, and I shopped around and I bought the Fujifilm X100S. And I really fell in love with that camera, and it made me just continue shooting with the mirrorless. But uh, since then, you've had the X-H1, and based on your handling of the X-H1 and seeing the footage that comes out of it, I decided to add the X-T3 to my extensive camera collection. So there's image quality for stills and video, and we've actually been doing both because my main incentive for getting the X-T3 was to do more video with it um, because we wanted to match our colors that um, we were shooting for video. So I think the X-T3 is a lot sharper, which makes sense because it's a brand new processor, it's the latest camera to come from Fujifilm, so it has all of the best uh, features in terms of image quality. Yeah, I would have to agree when I compare the footage or and the photos, the X-T3 looks a lot sharper. Even though this is six months um, older only, when you look at them, it actually is quite baffling how much sharper the X-T3 stuff comes out. It really is, It yeah. really is amazing. It does have two more megapixels. I don't think that makes too big of an impact, mm -hmm. honestly. Whatever the new sensor does and the new processor does on top of that is making a big difference. It, it really does. For both video and photo, we're yeah. noticing just everything coming out is a lot sharper, no matter what lens we use, in fact. I mean, the lens type does make a slight difference, I think, in the sharpness and the colors. Yeah, but we but both normally shoot with the same lens. Right, yeah. yeah. We shoot a lot together with the 18 to 55 lens, mm -hmm. which normally you have to shoot on that, but we'll get more into that later. Um, so yeah, I would say image quality is a win for the X-T3, hands down. The big difference in what you get in the X-H1 is that it has IBIS. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to shooting stable video, this one wins. You can really pan well with this. Uh, you can hold it for a long time and it doesn't shake. It's, it is more stable, as you would expect, from having IBIS. So that's a really big difference in the feature set. But the X-T3 being newer, and having the new processor and the new sensor, it actually comes with more features overall. Um, the metrics of the video, the specs of the video coming out of yours are higher. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. You can go to higher dynamic ranges, you can go to lower ISO. There's just more you can set your X-T3 to, and it even supports new codecs, but when we tried that, the output files were enormous and really cumbersome to work with. So you have to do a lot more prep if you're gonna turn on the higher quality codec. But it also, besides the codec, it supports higher colors as well. It goes to 422 and 10-bit and stuff like that. And this one does not come as close on that. Um, the X-T3 comes closer to the GH5 when it comes to the specs of the video you're getting out of mm -hmm. it without external monitors. Right, so the main thing that the um, X-T3 is really lacking is the IBIS, but you can still get some form of stabilization if you're using an OIS lens. That's why the 18-55 to has been a really great lens because it has um, some stability and so I've been finding that even without IBIS I can still get some pretty stable footage directly at a camera. Yeah, that's right. You'll be surprised how well the OIS is itself does on the X-T3 alone, so mm -hmm. it, it, it does not make it unusable for handheld video. So one thing the X-H1 X -H1 does really, really well, and even surprisingly well, it lets you hold the, cam the, the shutter open for a long time. So mm -hmm. um, I can shoot easily for one second, which kind of blows my mind compared to what's been possible in the past. And that's because of the IBIS. I don't think you can do that with the X-T3. No, um, I think I can go at maybe like a 150th, 150th of a second and maybe slightly lower than that. But for the most part, um, even shooting at higher ISOs, I'm noticing more noise. But that, of course, is because I'm used to shooting on a full frame camera. So my expectations are maybe a little bit too high. But uh, for video, I think this has just been a really fantastic overall camera. When it comes to the features, um, one thing to talk about actually is the focus. Um, they really improved the autofocus on the X-T3. Uh, the eye and the face detect is extremely accurate and it's, it's there uh, mostly. Sometimes it's not the most accurate and it'll focus on like, what was it, a table? Yeah, it just, it, something it like a little pattern out, that resembles yeah, a face. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes it's incorrect. 
Um, I think it's still behind the Sony, the Sony autofocus, especially for face detect and eye detect. It's so good, it'll get people's eyes across the room. Mm -hmm. And this camera isn't quite there, but it's made a pretty big improvement compared to previous generations. That's right, it's best in the Fuji lineup for focus. So mm -hmm. altogether summed up, this has IBIS that has better focus and best, better specs. Um, mm -hmm. So I think when it comes to features, it's about a tie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with maybe a slight edge um, for the X-T3 because of all the new sensor stuff and new processor. Mm -hmm. But it depends what you're shooting. If you're shooting a lot of video, this wins. Yeah. And so, so the features are about a tie. You can see how they, they are going to differentiate this one to be the video camera in the future and stuff like yeah. that. But so right now I see it as a tie. So this is your first Fuji, but what do you think about the handling? Um, I like it a lot. I think. It takes some getting used to using the dials to control your um, your shutter speed, your ISO, your exposure compensation. So for me, that was a bit of an adjustment. But now that I do it, I have a hard time going backwards. So whenever I'm using the Sony, I actually forget. I'm like, where are my buttons? I don't remember. I'm trying to like use my dials that aren't there. So once you get used to using Fuji's dials, you're either gonna love it or hate it. Some people don't like it, but I think a vast majority of people really, really like it. Yeah, I think it comes more natural. So when it comes to comparison between the two cameras, they are dials are almost the same. The so. only thing you're missing is exposure compensation. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so this one does not have exposure yeah. compensation, which I, I prefer having. I do as well. This screen here is an extra, and it really only helps me in particular for two things. One, shooting in the dark is actually really nice for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is um, I like to, at a glance, see whether my battery is charged and whether I have more room on my yeah. cards, mm -hmm. so that when I'm prepping before I go on a shoot, I don't have to start fiddling with stuff. I can just at a glance see that. So that helps, but I still miss my dial. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing is that um, this one has the grip. I think that's the biggest, biggest difference. And the grip, to me, being male, having bigger hands is a big win. I can hold on to this camera comfortably without any strap on. And I never have dropped it or even come close because of the grip. Another big advantage is that when you start putting on the bigger lenses, like the red badge line, mm -hmm. um, they are large and you really need this grip to counterbalance that um, the height and the weight or the, the length and the weight coming out on this side. So mm -hmm. for bigger, nicer lenses, this body is better and for holding it with no strap is better in my opinion. I think the, the grip here is kind of subjective because I have a lot smaller hands. So for me, the X-H1 grip is actually a little bit too small. And I prefer the X-T3 grip because it just fits my hands better. And it's a lot better than, say, the X-Pro2, which doesn't really have much of a grip. It's a lot a flatter. Slight, yeah. So I appreciate that the X-T3 has some grip and it's kind of in between the X-Pro2 and the X-H1. Another big difference that I can think of right now is the shutter. They, they really surprise everybody and give it an amazing shutter on the X-H1. Uh, which I didn't expect it was a delightful surprise and it's really smooth and subtle I've never seen a shutter like that apparently it comes from the GFX line and uh, X-T3 has more of the normal standard shutter on Fuji's that the X-Pro2 has So your shutter is, is a lot more quiet um, which can be good or bad I actually kind of like that my shutter is a little bit louder so I can actually hear that click and you can actually turn that off if you switch over to the electronic shutter versus the mechanical shutter. Right, and the reason this one is subtle like this, it's like a little whisper almost. Uh, it actually shakes your camera less, so that's one reason this camera can do the long exposure handheld better. Um, so summed up all together, we may disagree a little bit. I personally think that the handling on the X-H1 is better and because of the better shutter and because of the grip. I think the X-T3 is better because I like my exposure compensation dial and I actually like this, this sh uh, more shallow grip here. Let's talk about what all the Fuji shooters care for, aesthetics. <laughs> and it's no surprise that Fuji film shooters really are into the way their cameras look. Um, when it comes to them, they look different and yours looks a lot more like an old vintage camera. So the, uh, the very week I got this camera, we went to Las Vegas and we were walking around the casino shooting and I got my very first compliment from a guy who was like, what camera is that? It looks like a really cool classic film camera. And I'm like, well, it's a digital camera. So I mean, right off the bat, I've been getting compliments from it, which I didn't even expect. Yeah. So I think even people that don't shoot Fuji, when they see this camera, they're just intrigued by the whole design of it. And it matches um, clothing styles better than the other 
yeah. DSLRs, bulky yeah, and not so sure. attractive. Mm -hmm. So the X-T3 does that really, really well. This one differs a bit and it's not actually what you've been seeing most with Fuji's. It looks a bit more modern and a bit more like a heavy duty kind of bigger. Um, it's closer to a DSLR, both in terms of the size and the grip and also like this top dial. Yeah, the way it looks. Yeah. So I would say it looks a little less good. I would give yeah. the aesthetic appeal to the X-T3. But to be fair as well, my X-T3 comes in either black or silver and the silver I think really just makes it pop. So I yeah. like that option to that customize true. it a bit. And the red button. <laughs> add a little red button, so the silver and the red button I think just take it up a notch. Yeah, yeah, but I think it looks better. I still like the look of this, but in a different, more gritty, more a little more modern way. And here's this uh, interesting piece here from the GFX too. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I would say Aesthetics the XT3 wins. The last thing to talk about is just the way the bodies are made. Um, when you hold it and it's already clear, um, this is a sturdier, heavier camera. It's made of harder materials and actually better materials. And the outside as well is what scratch and dust proof on this one. I think they're both, they both have a degree of weather sealing, but I oh, would be surprised is. if yours is slightly more weather sealed than mine. Yeah, the weather, yeah, I'm talking about the yeah. scratches and the dust and all that. This yeah. material is overall the better quality material, both mm -hmm. inside and outside. And when you think about it, this is actually a more expensive camera, even though it's a previous generation sensor and processor. And why that is, is actually because of the body, because of the shutter. And the IBIS. And the IBIS, yeah. yeah. Um, overall, but if you were to buy them, we'll, we'll sum up with that. But um, that is why you're paying more for the premium body on this one. Mm -hmm. And yours is made of slightly less um, high quality and less sturdy material. So I would give the body to this one. One touch on the X-T3 to improve this, you can actually lock the viewfinder the mm. after correction mm -hmm. and that really actually means a lot to me because this sometimes turns on its own and it's actually frustrating you start seeing blurry through the viewfinder mm. yours locks and that never happens so that's a, a big win there this one is meant to be the more specialized video camera to differentiate like the sony differentiates the s line of the alphas mm -hmm. uh, for video so they'll be delivering more features but Things are right now as they stand because of that processor and, and sensor, you actually get more features for video on the X-T3 minus the IBIS. I'm actually very excited to get that tech into this body and that will be my really, really top um, choice for a Fuji camera. At that point it would be X-H2. When the X-H2 comes out, how is that going to be different from the X-T3 line or the X-T line? Well, it will be bigger if you have the premium body features and it will mm -hmm. have IBIS and it will be larger. You know, like, so more expensive as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the X-T3 will stay the more compact, more stylish, um, you know, it's still a very good camera, but you don't, this will be really the top if you want the top and the, all the weight. And that will be a very performant, smaller version, really.